la pétélicula. We will forever be grateful for the kindnesses that you have given to all our families over the years on dark and sunny days. After all President Mandela had endured and given to South Africa, to the people of this continent, and to the world, no one would have begrudged him a quiet and peaceful retirement. But that was not for him. Like the old man in Dylan Thomas's fa famous poem, he refused to go gentle into that good night. Yet neither did he rage against the dying of the light. Instead, he simply soldiered on, raging instead against injustice and leading us toward the light, toward protecting the environment, reducing poverty, inspiring young people to civic service, resolving conflicts in Africa and the world over, fighting AIDS, and most important of all, reminding us every step of the way that the most difficult changes in life involve changing ourselves from the inside out. The critical concern that George Soros has expressed is what it describes as market fundamentalism. The dominance and precedence of the capitalist motive of private profit maximization, which has evolved into the central objective that informs the construction of modern human societies in all their elements. Nothing can come out of this except the destruction of human society, resulting from the atomization of society into an agglomeration of individuals who pursue mutually antagonistic material goals. Necessarily and inevitably, this cannot but negate social cohesion and mutually beneficial human solidarity, and therefore the fundamental condition of the existence of all human beings, namely the mutually interdependent human relationships without which the individual human being cannot exist. I'm arguing that whatever the benefit to any individual member of our nation, including all those present in this hall, to defeat the tendency in our society towards the deification of personal wealth as a distinguishing feature of the new citizen of the new South Africa. With some trepidation, advisedly assuming that there is the allotted proportion of hadn't seen its present here this evening. <laughs> I will nevertheless make bold to quote an ancient text which reads in Old English, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. And having no guide, overseer or ruler, provided her provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy, thy want as an armed man. I know that given the level of education of our audience this evening, uh, <clears throat> the overwhelming majority among us will know that I've extracted these passages, passages I've just quoted from the book of Proverbs, 
contained in the St. James edition of the Holy Bible. Still, for some reason, he persists in calling me boss. For years, whenever I would call him, he would say, my boss. How are you, my boss? I would reply, how can I be your boss? And how do you respond when your hero calls you boss? He would say, Secretary General of the UN, you run the world. <laughs> of course, as he knows, I never did run the world. <laughs> now I don't even run the UN. I am merely, as you heard, a village elder. And still he persists. I think he's teasing me. But then he has always been like that. You see it in his expansive smile. Nelson Mandela may be the most gentle, good-humored. He's also one of the strongest. We all know about his courage, tenacity, which saw him through 27 years in prison and saw South Africa through the end of the apartheid and a difficult, but successful transition to freedom. The world has seen how deeply he believed in freedom, human dignity, and the right of the individual to fulfill his or her dream. And in our work together, I have been privileged to see how determined he can be in pursuit of those ideals. We admire you. President Mandela for returning justice and democracy to your country South Africa and in doing so for becoming an aspiration for Africans and for people the world over you have taught us that if one believes in compassion for humanity we can all make a difference South Africa is a young democracy that has set a high standard for the continent in terms of its focus on constitutionalism, human rights, and democracy. In preparation for its democracy, South Africa made strides in institution creation, including enshrining a constitution with an ambitious and far-reaching human rights agenda and establishing the Chapter 9 institutions, namely the Human Rights Commission, Youth Commission, and Gender Commission. As part of the democratic process, South Africa strengthened the media and ensured freedom of information. This country, your country, has led the way in establishing principles for an effective parliament a fair and transparent judiciary and a transformed legal system.